So, um, hello everyone. Today we are with one more interview uh, with the experts in the field of education uh, because we are having uh, Eden anniversary for 30 years and uh, our aim is to hear uh, from different people involved Eden but also experts in their field about education uh, and situation which is going now and how they can reflect uh, it uh, regarding the Eden role uh, in uh, these uh, times. So I'm very happy today to have Antonio Teixeira with us from uh, Universitate Aberta uh, in Portugal, uh, who was also even uh, president before, and it's actually he was my role model to follow when I started to be uh, even president. So how are you, Antonio? Very nice to have you with us. I'm fine, thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you and all the um, the colleagues that will be following us. <laughs> uh, well, I'm fine. Um, I have already my shots, my vaccine shots, so <laughs> I'm perfectly, <laughs> perfectly fine uh, in this sense. And uh, well, it's, it's really a pleasure to to be here. And let me also start by congratulating you as the president for the 30th anniversary of Eden. This is a uh, quite a remarkable feat for, for the association. Yes, can you imagine that we have already been 30 uh, years old and I hope uh, that next 30 years will be even more interesting than uh, these, one, these ones. Sure. But um, let, me, let me ask you, as a, as a person um, involved in uh, education with the, uh, many experience from position uh, of the lecturer, but also from the position of the person who was in the management and who made some topics. Uh, I, I cannot forget uh, when I was in Lisbon and you and Tony Bates presented how you started the implementation, systematic implementation of e-learning uh, at your institution. So how do you perceive all these changes which are happening now and do you think that uh, this COVID pandemic was really significant one uh, in education? Well, uh, it is. Uh, I, I do. I do feel um, that it has been a, um, a milestone. I, I would. I wouldn't say that it has changed dramatically the way that we think about education and uh, technology enhanced learning in particular. Uh, I wouldn't also say that it changed dramatically uh, the models that we um, apply, the, the the research in a, in a, in a broader sense as well. But um, on one hand, it has um, dramatically accelerated the process of change that was already occurring. So uh, these uh, uh, ph phenomena that we call the digital transformation of uh, education had already started, and it, of course, got a, a tremendous boost uh, with the, uh, as a consequence, a consequence from the, the impact of the pandemic. There's also something important on my view which is uh, the, the widening of the field. So it uh, dramatically widened the number of pr practitioners, but it's also widening the number of researchers. So there's a new uh, interest uh, of the research community on open education, on distance education, on, on e-learning, on online and digital education in general. And, and this is, is bound to lead, of course, now we're seeing a, a lot of uh, outputs which um, may, maybe are not uh, too significant in terms of quality, but these will lead to an increase, uh, not just in the, um, in the scale uh, of research and practice, but also in the quality uh, 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 of research and practice. In, in the, and so in this sense, it has contributed uh, a lot to um, upscale uh, the, 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 in this sense, the dissemination of um, e-learning. On the other hand, I would also say uh, that it's, um, it's also high, um, uh, it, it had a, a very important impact in terms of public opinion, how society in general uh, think uh, uh, of, of these topics, uh, um, how also um, Policy and government, uh, and government policy, and well, being a national level or regional level, uh, even institu at the institutional level. So this awareness of these topics has also in increased tremendously. And in the end, I would say that uh, our field has also um, gained from the experience in the sense that a, a number of problems that we, some of them were already 
um, identified, others are new, have been um, also, um, will, will of course, re, um, in a sense, um, rearrange our agenda uh, and will uh, give us some new uh, focus of interest as well. Um, so, of course, I mean, um, I would say that, of course, uh, uh, there is not much uh, new uh, discoveries in a sense, but the impact, the scale, the speed of the transformation has changed, and that has created new opportunities and also new problem challenges in a sense. Yes, you are right. Um number of issues that you have mentioned have been already existing for 20, 30 years. This is a, a, not a new uh, thing that now we have moved online. We know lots of things about that. Uh, if we tackle the, the issue of open education and you said public awareness, uh, do you think that now the, the op open education has got the five minutes of glory to start to be much more present and uh, much more acknowledged? Uh, in the society as, I would say, an uh, issue which can significantly contribute to the quality of education as such. Yes, uh, yes, I do agree. Um, on one hand, uh, we, we can also, uh, we could already, uh, already see that there was a, a wider movement of integration of the different open movements, uh, and being uh, open access, open education, um, and others, uh, open source, different kinds of openness, uh, open movements in this sense in the field of education or related to education and these under the big umbrella of uh, open science so in, uh, in uh, as the uh, the umbrella concept in a sense so this movement was already um, developing uh, but what happened in, and we could see of course with the with the pandemic crisis the importance of openness co open collaboration in this sense uh, in, not only in research, but also in innovation and, and in practice. Uh, we've seen something that is really remarkable, which is um, um, the, create, the generation of uh, a tremendous amount of networks of collaboration uh, in education, um, as it happened also in other fields of, um, of knowledge, in, 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 uh, for instance, in medical sciences, uh, uh, we've seen that as well. So. Um, the the emergency, the impact of such a um, well, uh, 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 and such an impact, uh, such, a, such a phenomenon has the, uh, as the pandemic, for which, of course, society was not ready to tackle with, um, has generated um, a tremendous amount of collaboration, and that has, of course, um, um, fostered on one side, on one on side, but also on the other had also uh, relied on openness. But I would also say something, and we have seen uh, how resources were, uh, um, were open resources, uh, open educational resources were shared and uh, used. And uh, well, Eden itself had a, a tremendous experience with the webinar series and all of this. And this of course is uh, more, um, more, more than just, uh, um, something that we already knew what had an impact and um, uh, effectiveness that we are not uh, um, probably uh, counting on. I would also um, point out uh, something which was, it was important uh, with, with this crisis, uh, which is uh, how we look at education as a process. Uh, I mean, throughout times we can we can I go back to the to the ancient Greeks <laughs> to the, the, and 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 beyond. Um, education has always been see, uh, thought about as a process of emancipation, and in that sense, uh, the process of emancipation is and, and education is a, a caring for that emancipation of others and uh, oneself as well. Uh, and and now it has become even more clear. Uh, as as um, as we've been progressing in the last couple of years, on the need for this uh, emancipation be uh, a, a global movement in this sense and be open to everyone. Uh, we've seen this with um, with um, what we could call digital citizenship, for instance, right? Um, the, the awareness of the importance of having the right to access, having 
also the the the, the duty to learn uh, online. For, uh, this this so the the. Um, uh, the, the understanding the, the digital citizenship as a right and also as a duty to act using these new media, um, this awareness is something that also um, will, in a sense, um, highlight the importance of uh, opening up uh, the education process. Um, so this connection between open education and uh, the digital uh, transformation of education, I think it, it has become even more um, strengthened in, in this sense. Of course, open education and distance education have a, have a long um, connection, uh, but um, the, this has, in this, in this context, I would say, become even more important and uh, significant for society in general. Um, well, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's um, open education is now open education, and well, uh, distance education as well uh, have become part of the mainstream. So they're on. on it's it's not just something uh, from the borders of the education systems. Uh, something that you have there as a kind of uh, complementary thing. Something that could help you to reach out for um, people who cannot access uh, educational opportunities um, as, as the others, so uh, marginalized groups or groups at risk, uh, populations at risk, things like that. Uh, now it, it had become something of a need for everyone. And has this, that was an important change, I would say. Yeah, I agree with you. As you mentioned that we are now open more globally, uh, more networking. Um, as Eden president, uh, uh, you had a time when you uh, decided on how and where should Eden go on. What would be your vision or some insight? Uh, where is Eden position now in, in the world, in Europe especially? Uh, and what should be uh, our next steps? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you're the president. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking for certain advices. Yeah, well, of course. No, I, I think um, um, if you look back at, uh, at, the, um, at the history of Eden, Eden has managed also as an organization. Uh, Eden is basically an association. Uh, and, but as an organization, uh, which is basically uh, supported by all its members being individual members or institutional members, it has always understood uh, the sense of time uh, and, and how uh, things were evolving in the field. And if we look at how Eden has progressed throughout these three decades, we can see also important changes in how uh, the association has, uh, has conceived about its, its mission, its uh, um, portfolio of activities, how it connected with, with the field, how it, uh, how it acted uh, uh, as well. Uh, um, looking ahead, and so I, th I think that in the, um, in the last decade, in a sense, Eden has prepared for this moment. Uh, and uh, the role that uh, Eden has played in this uh, context, which has been significant, uh, in, especially in Europe, has been, I think, a kind of um, natural conclusion of a process of rethinking and readjusting and pre preparing the, uh, that the association has uh, um, uh, undertaken uh, throughout this, uh, this decade, in a sense. Looking ahead, as, as you were just challenging me to, <laughs> uh, I would say that um, this, uh, this pandemic crisis has also proven the importance of networking, but in a sense, uh, in a new sense. Uh, Eden has a, uh, as a role, of course, uh, but the role is not, um, it, 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 it's, I mean, it's not dependent only on the association. So we are part of a, of a, a global network in a sense. And uh, if Eden understands how it can operate in that, in that system, better still. Eden is now, has now a global outreach as, as never before. Um, and in this sense, uh, what do we, do we, I mean, as an, as an, practitioners, as researchers, what do we need from Eden? I think 
based on what has been the experience um, um, in the last uh, year, uh, Eden can play a very important, and is playing a very important role in representation of the field. So um, understanding what, uh, what is important in terms of uh, um, legal framework, uh, um, for instance, quality standards, uh, all of these uh, things that actually regulate, in a sense, uh, the field of, of practice, uh, of practice, uh, but it's also um, it also ha plays a, a very important role in leading trends of of uh, of, um, of research, leading trends of innovation, leading trends of practice. Uh, not just so it, it, in this in this sense, it's it also plays more than just a, a representation role, also a role of inspiration. It should also inspire. Uh, not only the, the current practitioners, but also the new practitioners that are coming in, the new researchers that are coming in, also supporting uh, innovation, uh, but supporting it not only uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, sharing um, knowledge, but also sharing their, Eden has a tremendous amount of uh, expertise, not only in terms of uh, the output of, the, of its conferences or the output of its uh, journals, but also the expertise of um, its members, individual and institutional, and how it can help, uh, how it can facilitate sharing of, of, the, of that, uh, of that um, expertise, but also speeding up and supporting uh, the connection, which I think it's critical between research and practice, uh, research innovation and practice, and so, and so supporting this knowledge and innovation transfer from research to um, uh, to the, the change of, of, of the educational practices. Um, being a quality reference as well. So we live now in a society that is, well, a network society in, in which uh, we are um, living in, in, a, in an era, uh, in an age, of uh, inf information abundance. And this has been also very clear in the context of a pandemic. We have all the information that we want, sometimes uh, too much information. So we need to have some kind of guidance in uh, what is the, uh, what, what are the quality references? What is actually um, a good uh, reference and not, and even can help uh, the community uh, and not just the community, all the ones that are interested in um, in these topics to um, to actually um, understand, uh, to, to, to learn how to differentiate uh, the, um, and, and to, uh, to validate, in, in this sense, even, even can uh, help validating uh, the, uh, reference, uh, the, the, the good references. Um, validating practices, uh, research output and all of this. So in this sense, being a kind of, uh, of a quality reference that can be, uh, important to, to the field. There are other um, um, important roles that Eden can play, but uh, um, the important thing is to understand that uh, the role of an association as Eden with its tremendous outreach is also to um, help lead others, in, uh, other associations throughout uh, the world uh, in generating movements of change, of positive change, because change can also <laughs> sometimes be negative. So uh, in this sense, I think that Eden has a, a very important role, probably even more important now than ever before, because also the outreach is much larger, much wider. And, and uh, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm really confident that uh, uh, the, the, organization, the association and all its memberships Membership will will uh, will um, will push it forward in that direction. Thank you, Farno. Such a nice word. And for the last uh, for the last uh, uh, question, uh, very briefly, uh, if you can predict the future, for example, <laughs> five years, so you are so sincere now. Um, what would be your ideal? Uh, educational education uh, uh, system uh, which we should live in? Well, I mean, uh, uh, going back to the basics, uh, the, the ideal educational system is the one that promotes at best emancipation. So in this sense, um, 
uh, who, the, the best uh, education possible is, uh, is the one that allows everyone to, um, to develop its, its potential and to, um, um, to develop its own um, 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 autonomy. So, um, and, and in, that, in that kind of uh, process, uh, of course, we cannot expect that uh, everyone has the, the chance, the opportunity to, um, to learn from, from the best, but we are all learning uh, from the best, which, which is also um, the, the result of our own collaboration. So uh, we are uh, also moving from um, a kind of uh, understanding of um, knowledge and education as a, a very individual process to uh, another understanding in which the inter interdependence and interconnection between all of us uh, is very important. So this kind of um, in collective intelligence, uh, this collective uh, also agency that, that um, is, is now, of course, uh, probably the, um, the focus of education. And in that process, uh, technology uh, is very important because it can help, uh, help disseminate that, those opportunities for everyone. It can help improve uh, the processes. It can, in a way, it's a tool that can uh, also help you be more efficient in that, um, in that, um, for that goal. But the goal is basically to allow everyone, and I mean everyone, <laughs> independently of its condition, of its, um, well, uh, of its context, to uh, be able to emancipate and to develop its soul, its full potential. Thank you, really nice words, and I hope Eden will contribute to the world uh, and the educational system you have uh, predicted and hoping for. So thank you very much for this interview and look, looking forward to see you soon. Thank you, bye. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs>